The Columbia Broadcasting System presents a new comedy. My Friend Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane with John Brown as Al. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship. When other friendships have been forgotten, theirs will still be hot, love, love, love. Sure, it's something to sing about. And they can sing about it maybe because they haven't any friends. But I'm singing the blues about it because I've got a friend. My friend Irma. Now, don't get me wrong. I love that girl. Most people do. It's just that Mother Nature gave some girls brains, intelligence, cleverness. But with Irma, well, Mother Nature slipped her a Mickey. <laughs> I will never forget the first time I met her. I was walking along looking for a place to live in New York, and by a strange coincidence, I am having a very tough time. And I keep bumping into people, and I keep saying, I beg your pardon. Excuse me. Excuse me until... Oh, oh excuse me. I just never look where I'm going. I just keep walking with my head high. Now, just like the doctor told me, and taking di deep breaths, inhaling and exhaling like this. I keep counting to myself, one, two, three... Look, miss, will you stop counting long enough to help me up? Oh, of course, you must be uncomfortable on your knees. Oh! <laughs> oh, no, not at all, honey. I'd love it down here if I was Al Jolson. <laughs> Did you see that picture, the Jolson story? I just loved it. I cried and cried. Fine, fine. Now, would you please help me up? Oh, certainly. Here, give me your hand. Oh, my, what a beautiful ring. You know, my, my boyfriend, Al, he was going to get me one just like that. We had it all picked out, only you know what happened? It wouldn't fit your nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't for my nose, it was for my finger. It wouldn't fit my nose. I wish it had. I could have pulled myself up. <laughs> oh, oh, you want to get up, don't you? Yeah, yes, if you please. I can't make much time crawling. I can't either. I always walk. Well, uh, here we go. <laughs> Up to Daisy. Oh, careful, you're dressed. <gasps> oh, <laughs> we ripped it, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. Uh, but you know something? They're wearing split skirts in New York this year. <laughs> yeah, I know, but not all the way up to the neck. <laughs> hey, uh, we haven't been introduced yet. My name's Irma. What's yours? Goodbye. Oh, what an unusual name. What's your last name? Forever. That's a pretty name, Miss. Goodbye forever. Oh, Irma. That's when I should have run, but I didn't. Apartments are too hard to find these days, and Irma, bless her heart, is really a sweet kid. So I moved in with her in that one-room furnished freight elevator she called home. <laughs> Jane, the telephone's ringing. Jane, the telephone's ringing. Aren't you going to answer it? I don't know if it's for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, take a chance. Take a chance. It's not your nickel. Hello? I mean, hello? Uh, yeah, she's here. Jane, it's for me. Irma? <laughs> You know, if Marconi knew that you were going to use the telephone, he never would have invented it. <laughs> oh, Jane, I'm surprised at you. <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, not Marconi. You see, I'm beginning to think like you. <laughs> Everybody knows that Marconi invented spaghetti. <laughs> Irma, the telephone. Oh, hello? Al? Jane, it's Al. Well, what are you waiting for? Run down to the police station with the bail. <laughs> oh. Don't be silly. He's not in jail. Hello, Al? Eh? I. Oh. You? <laughs> That's enough for the vowels, Irma. Now try the consonants. <laughs> okay, Al. Goodbye. Jane, Al's coming over. Oh, honey. Why do you have to spoil our Sunday by having that jobless, phony windbag of an Al over? Jane... Yes. What's your opinion of Al? <laughs> I like him. 
I think he's a live wire, and it's just a matter of time before they hook him up and put a chair under him. <laughs> oh, Jane. I wish you wouldn't pick on Al, because someday I hope to be Mrs. Al. Oh, sweetie. Oh, sweetie, look, I didn't mean it. Now, stop sniffling. You'll ruin your pretty face with your mascara. Come on. But I love Al. Yeah, I know you do, Irma. That's the reason I'm hard on him. I want to be sure that the guy who gets my little Irma's heart's got a big enough heart to match it. Gee, thanks, Jane. <laughs> Gee, wouldn't it be wonderful if I married Al and you could... Uh, and we could have a double wedding? A double wedding? How do you figure that? It would be if you married Richard Rhinelander III. That was my blood pressure rising. She would mention his name... You see, Richard Rhinelander III is my boss, and I'm his private secretary. I'm in love with him, but I have no chance to marry him because he's Richard Rhinelander III, and I'm Jane Stacy I. Oh, I tried everything to impress him. I even told him I lived in a very intellectual atmosphere and that my roommate is a promising young novelist. Oh, Stacy, you fool, you. If he ever finds out how you live and what a mental midget Irma really is, you must end up <laughs> right between the eight, nine, and ten ball. Gee, I'd love to marry him. Irma, wouldn't it be wonderful if I wound up being Mrs. Richard Rhinelander the third? The third? What good is that if he has two other wives? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I won't even stop to answer that one. Gee, I... I couldn't marry a wealthy man and have to go to the opera. I don't know a thing about Shakespeare. <laughs> Honey, with five million dollars, all you've got to know about Shakespeare is that he's dead and you're alive. <laughs> well, let's forget Mr. Rhinelander. I'll never marry him because there's a difference in family. His ancestors were Mayflower people. Gee, they made all that money out of donuts? <laughs> If you say another word to me, I'll scream. Well, if you do, you'll wake up Professor Kropotkin, the violinist downstairs, and he needs sleep. Irma, I'm going to take a bath. Well, Jane, don't use all the hot water. Uh, this is the day we wash your dishes. <laughs> Hello? Uh, who did you want to talk to? Jane? Who's this? Oh, Mr. Richard Rhinelander. Uh, well, Jane's busy. You want to hang on for about 20 minutes? <laughs> yes, this is Irma, her roommate. How's my book? Oh, I finished it and I'm starting another. <laughs> Hard on me. No, you know those giant comics are mostly pictures. <laughs> oh, I'd like to meet you too, Mr. Rhinelander. Say, I've got an idea. Why don't you dash over for dinner tonight? Huh? Oh, it's no bother. Oh, we'd love to have you. And uh, by the way, if it's not inconvenient, I uh, ask your mother to bake us some donuts. <laughs> oh, remember, see you at 7.30 and don't bother to dress. It's strictly au gratin. <laughs> now, who could that be? Uh, come in. Hiya, chicken. How are you? Hello, Al, honey. Gee, I'm glad you came over. I didn't think I could make it. Took time off from three deals that were just simmering. Dying to burst into flame. Stuff like stucco bathtubs. Scratch while you bathe. <laughs> Tremendous project. Oh, Al, you're always talking business. You gotta be on my toes, honey, if you and I ever expect to settle down in that cozy little 30-room cottage. Oh, gee, Al, I'd just love to hear you talk like that. Come over here a minute, honey, and look in my eyes. What do you see? Murine. <laughs> Now, there's another great moneymaker. Wish I'd thought of that. Al, I know how ambitious you are, but can't you forget business and be a little more romantic? Well, I'd love to, kid, but in order to give you the good things in life, I gotta start thinking about this big deal I got brewing. Oh, gee, Al, if your deal comes through, maybe you and I could settle down on a little ranch. I can see it now, the egg and Irma. <laughs> Hiya, Janie, what's oh. the good word? Jane, Al's got a big deal on it. And what a deal. I just happened to line up no less than $100,000 worth of surplus army goods. Gee, Al, what kind of surplus are you going to sell? Rip cords. <laughs> Rip cords? Now, this is a big deal. I got a pajama manufacturer lined up to take the whole lot of it. <laughs> 
I even got an advertising gimmick with these rip cords. Listen to this. You get up in the morning and bail out of your pajamas. <laughs> you like it, Jane? I don't know how I ever lived this long without it. And, and that ain't all. This is a big promotion. You take a two-page ad in life showing a picture of a beautiful girl ready to retire. And underneath the caption... Hit the silk. <laughs> yeah. How'd you know? It figures. I think it's wonderful. Uh, what do you think, Jane? You know, the whole thing has tired me out. I'm going back and take another shower. <laughs> you see, chicken, I'm a beaten man. Jane doesn't believe in me. Well, that's not true. Jane likes you, Al. She always takes two showers on Sunday. I see. One for herself and one for those dirty looks she gives me. <laughs> and besides, Al, once you get to know Jane, you'll realize that her bark is worse than her tree. <laughs> You know, honey, I wouldn't say this to anybody else, but things are going so badly for me lately that I may be forced to do something desperate. Al, you're going to get a job? Irma, watch your language. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Al, I only... A thought... job? Irma, supposing a man like me would consent to go to work, say, for a bank at a small start and salary of $500 a week. Naturally, somebody like me moves fast. At the end of a year, I'm making 1000 a week as a second vice president. In two years, I'm making 2000 a week as a first vice president. In 10 years' time, I'm president of the bank and I got $100,000. Where do I go from there? I'm in a rut. But Al... <laughs> well, Irma, I'm in a rut now, and it didn't take me 10 years to get there. <laughs> so you see how foolish it would be for me to get a job. You understand, kid? It's clear to me, Al. It is? <laughs> well, I'm glad. You're a great girl and you deserve the best. But I don't want the best. I want you, Al. <laughs> you know, the brakes have always been against me. It'd be different if I wasn't a practical man, but my deals are so sound. It's all a question of the brakes. Gee, Al, I wish there was something I could do to help you. Thanks, chicken. But a guy like me with my ideas has got to mix with the right people. If I could only meet a man who's a millionaire. Well, Al, suppose you met a millionaire who's got money besides. <laughs> Irma, what do you mean? Well, Al, I'm throwing a dinner party tonight. Dinner party? Uh-huh. Yes, I've invited James Boss over. You know, the millionaire Richard Rhinelander III? Richard Rhinelander III? Yeah, she's crazy about him, and I thought an intimate gathering would bring them together socially, and financially, it would bring the two of you together. So why don't you just surprise us and drop over casually after dinner and bring your ideas? The millionaire Richard Rhinelander III. You know, Irma, if a guy like me with my ideas could meet a millionaire like James Boss, it'd be a natural combination. Oh, wonderful, Al. It'll be perfect. I can kill you and Jane with one stone. <laughs> but uh, won't Jane mind my coming? No, it's a surprise party. She doesn't even know Richard Rylander's coming. <laughs> Thanks, baby. You're a genius. I'll be there. Oh, before you go, Al, uh, haven't you forgotten something? Huh? Oh, yeah. What time does Rhinelander get here? Oh. Just leave her now. So long, ladies. See you later. Uh, honey, be careful going home. There's a crime wave on. Yeah, Al, keep your hat turned down. You don't want to get picked up. Ha, ha, ha! You fracture me. <laughs> so long, chicken. See you later. Jane, isn't Al wonderful? You ask me, so I'll tell you. For me, he'd be obnoxious. Well, for me, he's perfect. Because I wear low-heeled shoes, so we're both the same size. <laughs> Irma, please don't make me feel any worse than I feel now. Oh, don't feel low, Jane. I've got a surprise for you. You know who's coming for dinner tonight? Richard Rhinelander III. Oh, wonderful. And I'm Margaret O'Brien by former marriage daddy Cantor. <laughs> Irma? Yeah? Let's go out for dinner, huh? See a movie tonight? Well, we can't make it tonight, Jane, because we're having a dinner party. We're having a dinner party? Yes, I told you. I've invited your boss, Richard Rhinelander III, to dinner tonight. You invited my boss to dinner tonight? Here? Irma, how could you? It was simple. He called up and asked to talk to you, and you were busy, so I invited him. Oh, no. This is all a dream. Oh, and after dinner, Al's going to drop over, and Professor, and if Professor Kropotkin comes up, it'll be a wonderful party. Oh, no, this is a nightmare. Give me that phone. Maybe it's not too late to stop him. Oh, dear. Oh. Hello? Hello, is Mr. Rhinelander there? He's not? Well, could you please tell me where he went? 
Oh, he left to go to a dinner party at a Miss Jane Stacy's. Thank you. Jane, Jane, what are you doing? Nothing, just writing a suicide note. <laughs> And now the sportsman with the Lab Gluskin and his orchestra and their own special arrangement of... Good night, ladies, good night, ladies, good night, ladies, we're gonna leave you now. Merrily we roll along, roll along, roll along, merrily we roll along o'er the deep blue sea. O'er the deep blue sea. Farewell, ladies. Goodbye. Hello. Good night. to Farewell. Goodbye. So long. Good night. To Luke. Farewell, ladies. For we're gonna leave you now. Merrily, merrily we roll along. Merrily, merrily we roll along. Merrily, merrily we roll along for the deep blue sea. Merrily we roll along, roll along, roll along, merrily we roll along o'er the deep. Merrily we roll along, roll along, roll along, merrily we roll along o'er the deep. Merrily we roll along, roll along, roll along, merrily we roll along o'er the deep, deep blue sea. Rhinelander III is coming to dinner. Now I'm really trapped because I told him that I lived in an artistic neighborhood and that my roommate was a budding novelist. How could I justify having him sit around with that, that scintillating duo of conversationalists Irma and Al? Mr. Rhinelander is expecting an evening based on table talk a la information, please. What he's going to get is people are funny or it pays to be ignorant. <laughs> Well, finally, 7.30 rolled around. The bottle of martinis was catching a chill in the icebox, and I was running a fever in the living room. Richard would be arriving at any minute, and Irma wasn't ready. Irma, sweetie, it's 7.30. Uh, I know, Jane. I'm just getting into my dress. How do you like it? Don't you think you ought to get a little further into it? <laughs> Al likes this dress. Al would, but Mr. Rhinelander wouldn't. Now, oh, come on, huh? You've got just time to waltz this broom around a few times. Okay. Irma, huh? No, no, don't sweep the dirt under the rug. Man downstairs has been complaining. Complaining? Yeah, you know, that hole in the floor. Jane, I have a oh. wonderful idea. Why don't we take the rug off, and then with a hole in the ceiling, we'll have cross ventilation. Oh. <laughs> Irma, I'm so nervous. Well, don't worry. I'll handle everything. Uh, haven't you confidence in me? Well, certainly I have. Well, then why are you shaking? I always shake like this before I have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> now, now, Irma, let, let's not be nervous, huh? Let's, let's just take it easy. Uh, now, let's see. First, we, uh, we serve the martinis, and then... I, um, don't, I don't have to drink a martini, do I, Jane? What's that got to do with it? I'd rather have milk. <laughs> but how can you drink milk when we're drinking martinis? Oh, I know. I'll drink milk, but I'll put an olive in it. <laughs> oh, Irma. He's here. Oh, he's here. Now, now listen to me, Irma. I, I'm not worried. I, I'm not worried. I've, I've got confidence in you, and I, I know you'll do everything right, because if you don't, I think I'll kill myself and then you. <laughs> now, you ready? Okay. Irma, put the broom away. Come in. I beg your pardon, but does Jane Stacy let... Oh, of course. Good evening, Jane. I didn't recognize you for a moment. That's because you didn't take the curlers out of her hair. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, silly of me. Uh, come in, come in, Mr. Rhinelander. May I present my roommate, Irma? How do you do? Hello. Irma, would you mind taking Mr. Rhinelander's hat? I can't. Why not? His head is still in it. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Here it is. Irma, now that you have Mr. Rhinelander's hat, would you mind taking the broom away from him? Oh. <laughs> Irma, now that you have the broom, would you mind taking Mr. Rhinelander's hat? away from me. Oh. Won't you sit down, Mr. Rhinelander? Oh, thank you, Jane, but you don't have to be so formal. My friends always call me Richard. Thank you. Cigarette, Richard? Thank you. Match, Richard? Thank you. Ashtray, Richard? Thank you. 
Cigarette, Irma? Thank you. Match, Irma? Thank you. Ashtray, Irma? No, thank you. I don't smoke. <laughs> You writers, you're all alike, witty and eccentric. Yes, I knew you'd like Irma's wit. It's so, uh, so natural. <laughs> yes, so I noticed. My, what a charming apartment you have here. When will the remodeling be finished? Remodeling? <laughs> remodeling, this is it. <laughs> yes, yes, it's small, it's small, but our neighbors are so interesting, uh, artists, writers, uh, musicians, you know. For instance, there's a very famous violinist who lives downstairs. He's, uh... Professor Kropotkin. Kropotkin? Kropotkin? Yeah, he plays in the Paradise Burlesque. <laughs> uh, have you ever been there? Well, I don't think so. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, you wouldn't have seen him anyway because he plays a violin under the runway. <laughs> yes, uh, a lot of our neighbors are eccentric, but they're all artistic. Oh, I know what you mean. A charming environment. Yes. You know, it's hot in here. I think I'll open the window. go in to dinner. If I live to be the oldest woman in the United States and Canada, I'll never forget that dinner. It started off with Irma taking from the right and serving from the left. She also did a little dropping in the middle. <laughs> and Mr. Rhinelander looked very fetching wearing a hamburger over his right eye. <laughs> Then we got to the dessert. And it seems that Irma had put the dessert in the wrong tray in the icebox. It was the first time I'd ever tasted cauliflower sherbet. <laughs> so much for the food. The conversation was a monster in its own right. Richard said, uh, Fortunately, I've been able to travel considerably. Irma, do you like to travel? And Irma says... Oh, yes, it's really the only way to get any place. <laughs> well, finally it was over, and we decided to have our coffee in the living room. Well, Jane, that was an excellent dinner. Thank you. Wonderful food. That's nothing unusual. We always have food for dinner. <laughs> oh, Irma, you have a priceless wit. Hasn't she, Jane? She has? Oh, yes, she has. <laughs> You know, Mr. Rhinelander, I envy Jane working for you. Yes, the investment business can be exciting, but, you know, I wish I had more time for sports. Oh, you do love sports, don't you, Richard? Yes, I don't like to brag or appear stuffy, but at college I won my letter in six different sports. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And weren't you voted the, the best-looking man on the campus? Oh, well, Jane, that was only kid stuff. <laughs> but getting back to sports, since going into business with Dad, he sort of kept me hopping. You know how the office is, but, Jane, with you being the capable secretary you are, I... I've been able to find some time for squash and badminton at the athletic club. Oh, well, personally, I love golf. It's such an exciting game, and yet it's so simple. Yes, but you know, tennis has a dash of that same excitement. I, I swim, ride horseback, play tennis, bowl, and shoot pool. <laughs> Irma, do, do you really do all those things? No, but I have to keep up my end of the conversation. <laughs> More coffee, Richard. No, thank you. Well, I think you're wise. Coffee does keep one awake. Yes, coffee does have that effect on me. How about you, Irma? We've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Irma, we know you're in the conversation, dear. Just take it easy. Well, okay, I think I'll open the window. No, don't, no, Irma, the window. No. And the next night, Johnny O'Toole comes home again, slaughtered drunk, staggering up the stairs, patting him out like... <laughs> Chilly out tonight, isn't it, Richard? <laughs> well... Now, let's get down to business. When are you two going to get married? Irma! <laughs> oh, Richard, I, I really don't know what to say. Well, I... Irma, really, I, I'm, I'm very fond of Jane, but of course you know there's my father. Your father? Let him get his own girl. <laughs> oh, Irma. Oh, come in. Hi, Elfo. Surprise! Look, Jane, it's Al. The next sound you hear is Jane Stacy blowing her brains out. <laughs> Al, I'd like you to meet Richard Rhinelander III. Richard, this is my boyfriend, Al. 
How do you do? Well, hiya, Richard. Heard a lot about you. Richard, wouldn't you care to go to a movie or something? Oh, no sense in breaking up the party. Let's sit around and chew the fat. Richard's not hungry, Al. We just finished dinner. <laughs> well, Rich, what's new on the street? The street? Yeah, you know, the exchange. Oh, well, cotton was a little slow this past week. Uh-huh. Knew it. What about steel? It's a little off. I knew it. Richard, you can see for yourself the handwriting's on the wall. Really? You gotta get out of Wall Street. I do? Oh, absolutely. Sure, you could plug along, making a million here and a million there, but have you got security? <laughs> well, Al, I'm pretty satisfied with the investment business, and I think there's a great future in it for me. Granddad was president, and then father became president, and soon I'll be president. You see what I mean, Arma? Yeah, the whole family's in a rut. <laughs> but it's not too late, Rich. There's a place for you in my organization. Richard, let's go to a movie. No, Jane, let him talk. This whole thing may develop into a merger. Merger? You're right, Irma. Richard, I'm going to make a big man out of you. How would you like to team up with me? Well, I... Now listen to me, Richard. Well... Here's the plan. We've a chance to corner the market on surplus ripcords. We'll go out into the open market. Buy short. Sell long. Find it. going just like I planned. The boys are in there getting along beautifully. Beautifully. If Richard reaches for his wallet, he'll shake hands with Al. <laughs> now, Jane. Now, listen to me, Irma. You've ruined me. I should never have moved in with you. But, Jane. Don't but Jane me. But I thought... That... I don't care what you thought. You've ruined everything. Imagine his coming from his mansion on Park Avenue to this dump. Now, to top it off, your, your boyfriend, Al, is trying to sell him ripcord. But, Jane, Al's only trying to fix it so he has security. Irma, I've got news for you. Richard Rhinelander III has $5 million he hasn't even counted yet. But after he counted, what then? He'll be in a rut. <laughs> By inviting him to dinner tonight, you've just ruined me. Now, I'm going back in there, apologize, quit my job, and spend the night at the YWCA. But, Jane, are you a member? No, but I'll join. <laughs> Another thing, the next time we meet on the street, I only want you to say one thing. Goodbye. Will General Motors go for it? Richard, their tongues are hanging out for Ripcord. Well, Al, Richard, I really I mean, don't... I mean, Mr. Rhinelander, I, I can't tell you how sorry I am. I... Sorry? About what? Oh, you know, bringing you down here and having you meet people like Al and Irma Why, and... Jane, you've I... nothing to be sorry about. I'm delighted to have met two such real people as Al and Irma. And we're delighted to have met a millionaire with money. <laughs> Irma, how could you? Now, now, leave her alone, Jane. That's what I like about Irma now. They're so natural and honest. Oh, Dickie, thank you for that vote of confidence. <laughs> I'm so happy for you, Mr. Rhinelander. Now you can have security. You see, Jane... You see, Richard, it... you see, you were so wealthy and you live on Park Avenue and everything, and I thought you were coming here. Well, well, I tried to impress you, and I guess I've just been a fool. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, I'd like to say thank you, Jane, for a splendid evening. I like your apartment, and I think Al and Irma are swell. And Al, if you've got time, I want you to drop into the office, and maybe we can go into your ripcord proposition at length. Well, I've got to run along now. Goodbye, Jane, and please invite me again real soon. Oh, goodbye, Richard. Well, got to run now. Where are you going, honey? Where am I going? Now i got to see where I can get hold of some ripcord. <laughs> And that's my friend, Irma. My Friend Irma was written and directed by Cy Howard. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank <laughs> you.